We are staying with the rescue of 137 school children abducted from Kuriga in Chikun local government area of Kaduna State, where the Kaduna State government has since received the abducted students. One of the students during a conversation with Governor Obasani disclosed that a total of 137 students were kidnapped from the school on the 7th of March. She also confirmed that all students have been released except for their teacher who tragically died in captivity. Several children were observed with bandages on their heads and hands, indicating injuries sustained during their time in captivity. Major General Miyeren Sosaraso, who is General Officer Commanding One Division, expressed appreciation for the collaborative efforts of security and law enforcement agencies, which facilitated the safe return of the students. He confirmed that out of the 137 rescued children, there were 76 females and 61 males. But I'm happy that uh, the children, just like uh, my brother, General Saraso, have just said, uh, they have been uh, very cooperative. They made it clear to the army that uh, they were 137. Because like I told you in the media and I before coming here, nobody should know them better than themselves. Uh, strangers who have no connection with our state, who have no connection with the families, have gone to the media with figures that uh, we come you on your special visit this evening to come and see the rescued children of the local authority, local education authority and government secondary school, Kuriga, both co-located in Chukun local government area of Kaduna State. The unfortunate incident that led to the abduction of these children took place on the 7th of March, 2024. And as a result of the combined efforts being coordinated from the strategic level of all the security and law enforcement agencies working together in synergy, And President Bola Tinubu has commended the National Security Advisor, security agencies, and the Kaduna State Government for the dispatch and diligence with which they handled the situation. He emphasized the importance of collaboration between the federal and state governments for more positive outcomes, especially on matters of security. The President also assured Nigerians that his administration is deploying detailed strategies to ensure that schools in the country remain safe sanctuaries of learning. Elsewhere, members of the clergy of the Tiv Extraction Forum in Bali and Gashaka local government areas of Taraba State are calling on the authorities to ensure the arrest and prosecution of the killers of Pastor Jacob Abba, his wife, son, and seven others during a bus attack in Donga local government area of the state last week. Leader of the Forum, Nathaniel Sawa, said, aside from those who were killed, others who sustained injuries in the attack have been left to foot their bills, as no government official has either visited them in the hospital or contacted their families. Mr. Sawa expressed worry over the continuous silence of the government over the issue. The Forum commends the efforts of the police in Bali Division, but appeals for a full investigation into the murder of the commuters. This unfortunate incident has left us with many unanswered questions. We are pondering with a simple fact that there is no war and why would innocent commuters be ambushed and mercilessly murdered in their cold blood just like that without provocation. Again, the pastor and his wife's corses were recovered within Mararaba town. That means they were murdered inside the town. Where were the security agencies that up to now no arrests has been made? Also, not fewer than nine people were killed. And it appears to us as if nobody bothered because no one family of the victims is contacted by the authority. No official visitation or press release by either Donga or Bali local government council. Why? 
Today, we remember and honor the millions of Africans who were trafficked and enslaved over a century ago. For 400 years, enslaved Africans fought for their freedom, while colonial powers and others committed horrific crimes against them. But despite the abolishment of the transatlantic slave trade, the menace still occurs in the society. Inyo Luakopola takes a look at the transition of how slavery moved from being in chains to being without. These instruments you are looking at were instruments they were used originally. So anytime they hear the sound, it gives them nightmare. Slave trade was a universal phenomenon in the beginning. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt. But when it became based on the skin color, it affected the black race. From the Barakon in Badagri, the ancestors, the enslaved ancestors, were taken to Berefu, uh, also known as the point of no return. And they walk on the slave route, which is about 1.5 kilometers, till they get to the seaside. And when they get to the seaside, they enter a boat, that a small boat that takes them to the big ship that takes them away. The journey on the slave ship was also referred to as journey to unknown destination. At the time, there was a king called King Wawu who supported the abolition, so we should recognize African abolitionists. But today, the descendants of the enslaved ancestors they were taken to the Americas became very successful and they are all returning back. Oh, most of them are returning back home to Africa to reunite with their families. Bound in chains, although not typically, more than 1.6 million Nigerians are still being held as slaves, from child and sex trafficking to child labor and forced marriages. Although transatlantic slave trade ended in the 1940s, it still continues to persist globally, now called modern day slavery. As many Nigerians experience poverty and unemployment, many are thrown into the deep end of slavery. While some make it out, others are unfortunate. I ask some advocates on what the way forward is for Nigeria and how to abolish modern day slavery. Our daughters should be educated. And so we encourage also to send our children to school, get a better life for them. And at the end of the day, when they are matured, they can also get married. So it is important that the government put in place um, measures to address the root causes of modern slavery. Um, factors such as poverty, like I mentioned, employment, gender, discrimination, insecurity. What we have to do is to ensure that we campaign, we sensitize the community members, ensure we consolidate on the effort of the international organizations like United Nations, UNICEF, etc., etc., to ensure that we put an end to what we call modern form of slavery in all of its forms. Former U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton said, and I quote, Modern slavery, be it bonded labor, involuntary servitude, or sexual slavery, it is a crime and cannot be tolerated in any culture, community, or country. It is an affront to our values and our commitment to human rights. In Nyulua, Bukola, TVC News, Lagos.